I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The International Space Station is dying. Okay, maybe that's not so much of a secret, but the solution is. You see, we don't need the Orbital Reef, Axiom Space, or even the Haven 1, because we already have the answer to our space station needs right under our nose. This is the space race. Is the SpaceX Starship just a space station in waiting? Well, yeah, it certainly could be in theory. The Starship as we know it today is an evolution of the interplanetary transport system concept that was dreamt up by Elon Musk a decade ago. That vehicle had one sole purpose, to ferry thousands of people from the Earth to the planet Mars and establish a self-sustaining city on the Red Planet. The Starship represents a more scaled back and practical approach to rocket design compared to the ITS, but the general mission statement remains. This is a rocket intended to move large numbers of people on very long journeys into deep space. So maintaining a comfortable and habitable environment is core to the Starship design. So therefore, it would stand to reason that if a Starship can sustain a crew on an eight month journey to Mars, then it can be even more sustainable as a platform parked in low Earth orbit. Of course, the Starship itself has yet to reach the Kármán line without blowing up, but you know, it's a work in progress. So giving Elon the benefit of the doubt and assuming that Starship is more than just the world's largest firework, how could it be utilized as a new space station? The biggest advantage to the Starship is volume. And we don't mean noise, we mean space. Let's pull up an angle from the first Starship launch to help visualize this. With the tanks full of cryogenic fuel, we can see them clearly from the condensation on the outside. So everything above the frost line on Starship is empty space. And for a human scale, we can compare this video of Elon Musk standing on that top platform beside the nose cone. This stuff is gigantic. People are like ants crawling around on this thing. So that's an 18 meter tall fairing and the body is nine meters wide. Although it does obviously start to taper down at the nose, but that still gives us four ring sections at full width, which equals about 7.3 meters of height at the full nine meter diameter. In total, that adds up to approximately 1,000 cubic meters of internal volume, which is just a bit larger than the ISS at 935 cubic meters of space. This is a lot of room. It's larger than your average five bedroom house. Now, we've seen plenty of different mock-ups with the inside of a Starship laid out for a crude configuration, and typically that looks like a central tunnel and ladder going up the middle with five or six vertical levels stacked on top of each other. And the reason for this design is because in the context of a mission to Mars or even the moon, Starship would have to function while standing vertically on the ground with at least some amount of gravity acting on the crew. But in the context of a space station, this all changes. Now you aren't limited by the round, narrow slices of a vertical starship. One option would be to make the layout submarine style with decks that run lengthwise from nose to tail. Submarines with a hull diameter of 9 to 11 meters will typically have three decks, so we can imagine the same for a starship station. I'm not sure which orientation would be ideal, horizontal decks or vertical, I've never lived in a spaceship, but what do you think? Let us know below. Or you could even have a design with no decks at all and just make it one big open concept style space station. That would also be really cool. You'd have so much room for zero gravity activities. You could invent some kind of new zero gravity sport up there. And if you could do all that with one starship, then why not have two? Elon Musk says that the cost of these things will get down to $20 million a pop which is basically free in terms of space stations. With over 20 years in orbit, it's been estimated that the total cost to operate the ISS has been upwards of 150 billion US dollars. And if the cost is so affordable, you could link up a ton of these ships together in a big ring of like 20, all slowly rotating around to create the effect of artificial gravity, which in that case, you wouldn't have much choice but to use the horizontal nose to tail deck layout. So that solves that question. This is actually an idea that NASA was toying with back in the day. They had thought about making a big ring using the space shuttle's main hydrogen tank 
the big orange thing that the shuttle piggybacked on into space. The shuttle is a very similar size to Starship, but it lacks any of the functionality because it's just a big empty tank and Starship is an actual spaceship. So that all sounds pretty much perfect, right? And NASA themselves even agree. They've endorsed the SpaceX Starship as a new orbital platform to replace the ISS. That's what it says in the news, right? Well, wrong. So here's the scoop. In June 2023, NASA announced that they were putting their support behind seven individual concepts for new space stations that would be built and operated by private sector companies. This list includes an idea for a Starship-derived space station, but it also includes ideas from Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, Vast, Axiom Space, Think Orbital, and Sierra Space, in no particular order. So it's not like NASA is betting the farm on Starship, it's just one idea out of many that are being thrown at the wall. And more specifically, NASA isn't betting anything at all on any of these wannabe space stations. What we are talking about here are unfunded Space Act agreements as part of NASA's collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2 initiative. So what that means is NASA will provide the selected companies with technical expertise, assessments, and data to assist the companies in the development of new capabilities, but there's no money involved. I'm going to put it out there that we may have possibly overlooked some significant complications attached to the whole Starship Space Station idea. The most glaring issue here is size. While the internal volume of the Starship might be its greatest asset, it's hard to ignore the fact that two-thirds of the total structure will be unusable space. That's the area taken up by the engines, the plumbing system, and the propellant tanks. It's over half of the ship. The problem is that the Starship has to be a rocket before it can be a space station. There might be some engineering solution to make the lower half into usable space, but it would need to be really well thought through. The area just underneath the cargo fairing is a methane tank, and it's capped off by a stainless steel dome that's welded into the body of the ship, so you'd have to cut that dome out before you could even access the space. That needs a plasma cutter or a diamond blade saw, and even if you could get in there, now you're doing home renovations in low Earth orbit. That's really going to work against our theory that Starship would be easy and economical as a space station. The other glaring issue that we see with a Starship station is the lack of I.O. or input-out devices. Starship is kind of like a MacBook Air. There aren't a lot of opportunities to plug stuff in. What do we mean? Well, the ISS has a lot of ports and accessory attachments, docking ports, airlocks, robot arms, solar panels, stuff like that. The exterior of a Starship is famously smooth and shiny, so you have to wonder how it could ever have the functionality of a dedicated space station module. We know that Starship is intended to someday have a docking port in the nose cone, but is there ever really going to be the ability to have more access points and attachments on the body of the ship? Keeping in mind that because a Starship is a rocket first, the exterior has to be aerodynamically stable and sturdy enough to travel at supersonic speed through the atmosphere on ascent, and since the Starship is so gigantic, that's a lot of force that it has to resist. We've seen renderings of Starship that are like half covered in windows, which looks like an absolutely spectacular view into outer space, but can a Starship with windows actually survive a launch into orbit? That's something that still needs to be tested and proven before we can really start making too many assumptions. If we really want to go down the most practical and efficient route for leveraging the capabilities of Starship to build a space station, then it's better to think of Starship more in terms of a super heavy lift launch vehicle with a massive payload capacity. Starship doesn't have to be a giant space station because it can much more easily just deploy a giant space station. You wouldn't be able to use the full interior volume for habitable space, but Starship could place one seriously gigantic module into low Earth orbit. It could be up to 8.5 meters wide by 7 meters long, or maybe 10 meters long by 7 meters wide if you want to use more of the height of the fairing. And then, just with two or three Starship launches, you'd have one hell of a space station in orbit, plus SpaceX would still have those Starships that were able to return to Earth after deploying the payload, so it's a win-win situation. With that being said, should we just park a Starship in orbit and call it a space station? Probably not. It might seem cool at first, but the more you think about it, the more it just feels like a really lazy solution to a non-existent problem. 
we've got loads of cool ideas for new space stations that are specifically engineered to be orbital platforms that serve the needs of science and industry and will allow us to better humanity through work in outer space. There are even some really cool ideas in the group of seven alongside Starship. A couple of them we've never even really talked about on the channel before, so drop a comment if you'd like to see more space station content here. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.